Mac, I know, I know we're not a defensive player. We got to put up a better effort than that, buddy. <laughs> it looked like he tried to take a charge. Like he, he thought he was playing basketball. <laughs> he tried to get a rough in the passer. Rough the passer. <laughs> <laughs>to New Heights, ladies and gentlemen. A Jukes original show presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. New Heights is a show that is fully clinched. That's Ooh. right. We are in the playoffs, baby. Yeah, playoffs. playoffs! Playoff episodes coming at you. You're fully no. clinched. And fully untrapped. No. Oh. We'll, we'll get to That'll that That'll make later. sense later. Yeah. You already know. Uh, we are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey, out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Jason repping the University of Cincinnati Bearcats hat. You see him over there back in the Conference USA days. New Heights comes to you every single Wednesday. Subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts and follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show. That's with one S. And visit homage.com slash New Heights. Check out all of the merch and the uh, fun stuff we got. But the best is yet to come, baby. What's coming up on the show, Jason? Well, we got a great episode as always. Uh, we're going to recap both of our games. We're going to talk about a wild week 15 of games, <laughs> including a Vikings comeback from an uh, unprecedented amount of points. Uh, right, we got the Patriots, a uh, little uh, lateral roulette down there in <laughs> Vegas going on. What are we and, doing? Uh, and we'll also look ahead to our next week's games as well. But first, as always, new news. New news. There it is, still the number one sports podcast on Apple and Spotify. Man, uh, thank you to all you guys who tune in. Trav, do you also feel that the support is becoming greater? For me, at the stadium, it's, crazy. it's, been, it's been outrageous. The it's amount of crazy. People don't say go birds to me anymore. They just say new heights. New heights. Is, I, I, yeah, I, I'm telling you. and it's, it's not. It's crazy. I think it's been more, too, because... I've been playing a bunch of road win- road games, and even the workers at the stadiums. Everywhere. The fans in the stands. Everybody mentions the show, and I guess we don't realize it, but there's a lot of you guys that tune in each and every week. And, and a wide variety of different like people. Like This is a melting pot of people that we're getting to, that, yeah. that are tuning in here. We're getting melting kids, pot of fans. Getting, yeah. You know what I mean? This is crazy. It's really, really cool to see the appreciation. Uh, love the shout outs. Keep them coming. Trav, you've been, you, you said you, you told me you saw some uh, some more signs in the uh, stands. It was, I mean, there had to have been like five to ten signs, new height signs in the Whoa. in the stands in Houston. It was awesome, and don't think I don't see them, guys. I'm just locked in and don't can't really, you know, I don't know what is it. Uh, get involved with what's going on in the stands. I'm more locked yeah, in on focused. the field, but I definitely see the stands. I, yeah. I definitely see all of the signs, and it's awesome, man. To get your you got attention, some good ones. it must be pretty big. The Big Yeti, the Big Yeti's making it's, it's making a push, man. I didn't think people were going to jump onto the Big Yeti, the big uh, the like they thing. have, man. It's well, so funny. <laughs> All right, but keep it, keep it a uh, PG Big Yeti. All right, Geeky. we can't tell you how much we appreciate it, and to show some appreciation, we're going to get to our fan mentions of the week. Last week, we talked about renaming the NFL awards, and one of the awards that we had an idea for was the Coach of the Year Award being renamed the uh, Andy Belichick or the Bill Reed Award. Uh, Bill Reed. (laughs) Bill Reed. And, uh, of course, you guys, lickety split, uh, come at us with some images, and you guys did not disappoint. Ryan Himes on Twitter came at us with uh, a little mock-up, which – my favorite part of the mock-up actually was the trophy being just a Hawaiian shirt. The Hawaiian shirt. Because, uh, I mean, man, that is an Andy Reid staple. The only way it might have been more more Bill Reid would have been if it was a Hawaiian cut-off hoodie. You know what I mean? You got to yeah. kind of cross it over. But I definitely appreciate yeah. the Bill Belichick with the mustache. That's, stash, uh, the stash is hilarious, man. Yeah. He's got to grow that thing out, man. We yeah. just got to see it one time. Hopefully he feels inspired by some of these pictures, including this next one from uh, Rob J. Williams. Maybe not after this week. Yeah, this one was actually terrifying. <laughs> Rob, I don't know how you made this. Um, <laughs> if he sketched that, that is absolutely impressive to be able to kind of yeah. put that. Like, that's what you saw when you heard Andy Reid and Bill Belichick combination. Like, this is what you saw. 
For, for those That's of you listening on podcasts who can't see these images right now, I highly recommend to look at them because it's hard to describe. The best thing I can probably come to is um, like a unibobber crossed with, uh, <laughs> I don't even know, uh, uh, Colonel Sanders. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's an out there type of photograph, and um, it's very Damn. intimidating. Uh, he had probably. It was a quick turnaround too. That was like the fastest. That was like the first reply. Yeah, that was it. These are some. These are some, some detailed fingers. drawings. Yeah. These are. This is impressive. I want to know how the heck he made this. We might reach out to you, Rob, for uh, further illustrations if we need them because that was pretty good. <laughs> We're going to introduce a new. Uh, topic here called Broback, another new segment that we're going to do here, and uh, it's where we can get into some throwback stories about our brotherhood. Um, you guys seem to enjoy us talking about how, uh, <laughs> how I, our Thanksgiving stories and, and, and a bunch of other ones from our yeah, childhood. Family show. You know, the holiday spirit and everything. You just got some Christmas gifts uh, from teammates. Um, I did. Uh, I played Santa Claus at, in, in my locker room as well and got some gifts for some guys. Uh, you were rocking the flip flops and the new Louis Vuitton duffel bag. That's right. Which I thought in my lifetime I was never going to see. Well, you weren't going to see it. Well, when it's a gift, it can happen. You weren't going to see the Louis Vuitton uh, bag in your lifetime, but you did. And you can thank <laughs> Jalen Hurts. Um, I actually, one of the cool things about uh, receiving a gift, uh, and especially in like an NFL locker room there's a lot of times that gift is uh you know specific to the person giving it Jalen Hurts mm -hmm. is a stylish guy last year he gave us the Jordans those came in handy I would have never had the uh the red and blacks at the at the playoff the game last year without my man Jalen Hurts <laughs> now I got a Louis Vuitton bag Jalen is is really p pumping up my uh my fashion Swagger. repertoire Swagger. yeah my swag is is you have my no swag bar choice. is going up 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 um <laughs> No, but that's one of the cool things, you know. I think uh, before you know, you know, you'll be dressing up for game day, man. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> let me tell you, the Louis bags—they're nice. I, I unzip that thing; they're they're heavy duty. That'll they're not uh, they're not skimping on any of the materials. So nah, um, they do it right over there at LV. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. Yeah, Jalen Hurts hooked us all up, but yeah, back to the you know it's you know Jalen obviously gave us the um, the Jordans last year, the Louis Vuitton bag this year. Carson gave us one year, gave us shotguns. The next year was Yeti coolers. Do you have um, a shotgun? I never thought I would own a gun. I own a shotgun, <laughs> thanks to uh, courtesy of Carson Wentz. Yeah. It's engraved with my name and number on it. Ooh. And you know what? Right I've been now. skeet shooting with it, and it is a great time. So thanks, my, thank you to my man Carson. That's a hell of a gift. But that's what I mean. That's what's cool about an NFL locker room. You have guys from all over the country. You got Carson Wentz from North Dakota. You got somewhere there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know he went to North Dakota. Is, I'm hoping it, is there a Dakota. difference between North and South Dakota? Or is it just? I mean, it's the Dakotas. I don't think it's. <laughs> I think at one point somebody just got upset about like a chili cook off and said, "That's it. We're great in the South." <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was definitely a chili cook off. <laughs> But all these guys, everybody's got, you know, different uh, interests and likes and um, uh, things that they want to uh, that are specific to them. And uh, around oh, the yeah. holidays and everything like that, the gifts that you get, like, I don't care that I have a Louis bag, but I think it's pretty cool that I got a Louis bag that Jalen Hurts gave me. So there I'm going to go. wear that thing all over the place. Nice, man. That's good what about you? Right you got any good uh, teammate gifts? I know quarterback offensive line is a very – traditional standard uh, yeah yeah do you guys like does pat give you gifts do you guys um i can't remember if pat gets everybody gifts i know he definitely gets the o-line like the the dope gifts um and i can't remember what he gave him last year but i think this year uh we'll find out this week um, oh okay so maybe maybe be fun to talk about uh that yeah, next we can... week but i i always i always try and get everybody something yeah so this year, I um I got everybody bear bricks. Jason, do you know what a bear brick is? Actually, I just found out what a bear brick is. Um, nice. I don't know, but I, I know what it looks like. I don't yeah. know why it's a thing or what. It's just a collector's of, item. 
That's it. It's a collector's item. Yeah, it's a collector's item. So it's like it's a, a baby? it's like a piece of art. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a bigger beanie baby. Uh, I I have a few of them around the house. I kind of use them as uh, decor. Okay. In the house, um, and they all have with they'll come with like collabs. Like the Marvels will will do a collab with Bear Brick, and there'll be a Bear Brick Spider Man, or they're a Bear uh, a Superman or a Batman. Like they'll they'll have like different ones, and the depending on the collab will like be whether or not it appreciates or you know the the price goes up on resale value and stuff like that. It's like art. It's just a collector's item. But I um right. I got everybody on the offense one, and one I was actually did everybody get the same one. No, they all got different ones, which Ooh. was which Were was people the key. upset. Nobody was upset. Everybody was. I I I was like stressing over it too. I'm like, man, I hope this person likes Garfield. Were you? <laughs> you, know, were, you like, were you? Did you get really specific with like things that you knew, like one player liked? Yeah, like, like I went up to I went up to Trey cool. Smith. I went up to Trey Smith. He said Batman was he he loves was Batman. with Batman. So I I gave him the Joker one, and that Ooh. one was that one looks sweet. That, um, was, that sounds cool. I don't even know. Yeah, what looks I was like asking. Cool. I was asking guys who their favorite super superhero was. Like if they like like comics. If they were into art, there's a few Andy Warhol and uh, Basquiat uh, collab ones that that had a pretty cool designs on them from their famous art pieces. So I was kind of I was asking everybody. There's a few fashion uh, designer ones that mm-hmm. I was asking a few guys that were really into fashion if they mess if they like this brand or that brand. Um, and they had no idea what I was doing when I was asking them this. It was it was just like I was asking them. Uh, just common knowledge, and then yeah. sure enough, uh, a That's, random see? Friday Friday morning, they come in and these boxes were sitting in there. It was sweet, man. It was cool to see everybody appreciate it and uh, and rally rally around, kind of talk about them. And uh, I would told everybody, I was like, please do not feel obligated to keep them if you guys want to trade them because yours <laughs> is shitty. You think and you want a cooler one. Or vice versa, do it, do whatever you please with them, man. But it was, uh, it was fun, and that's that's what it's all about, man. Getting all these uh, grown ass men to act like little kids on a Friday morning, man. It's the best. What, yeah? What is it about Christmas in NFL locker rooms that make it so awesome? I mean, I'm sure it's everywhere. Everybody loves the holidays. They love giving. It's the season of giving. Um, man, we do white elephant in the O line room. Guys go all out. It becomes. It's always an amazing event. You're raising money for workers around the the, the facilities, so they oh, yeah. can get holiday bonuses. A lot of players give uh, percentages of their checks over to try and help out the people that assist us and help us do our job. All from the, the time. equipment managers to the custodians to the cafeteria workers. I mean, there's so many people that are support staff for us to do our jobs. The holidays are awesome, man. And what makes us appreciated so much is i think we had a great holiday growing up man christmas was big for us baby mama mama and papa kills man they they held it down during the holidays that's for damn sure yeah which leads us to the bro back portion of this segment what was the kelsey household like for christmas well i guess we'll first talk about what were our favorite gifts growing up do you remember what were yours yeah we were talking about 64 that was the epic i think that That was was like that was the highlight for for both of us and, and it was like that three, peak Xbox moment. 360, or just the X, the original Xbox was another original one. Original Xbox was another one. I remember the Game Gear. You were a little bit too young. The Game Gear, there was a video at one point. I'm, I don't know if Ed Kelsey has that video of me losing my marbles over <laughs> a freaking Game Gear that Santa brought me. I mean, it was crazy. It was nuts. Um, and then always, you know, I still remember when Synergy Sticks and hockey started being Hockey's. made. It was always sporting equipment, man. It was that was that was the big one. And for Dad me. always pulled the Christmas story style. Like he knew what gift we really wanted the entire time, and he wrapped it and hit it I so hit that it. you know we get to the end of the rep presents. Like, oh no, I didn't get the synergy stick. He's like, hey, what's that over there in the uh, living room that's sitting on the uh, <laughs> underneath the table? <laughs> what? Where? <laughs> sure enough, no way. Stick. And this leads us to why Ed Kelsey was incredible uh for christmas so is mama kelsey but ed kelsey in particular used to work a second job around the holidays the he best. would work at a candy store kiosk <laughs> at beachwood mall i think it was beachwood mall and um it was called, beachwood. and it was a seized candy kiosk mm-hmm. and uh he would uh work there to get extra money to buy us these gifts that we wanted during christmas 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, I have a sneaking suspicion to eat a bunch of peanut brittle because there was tons of peanut brittle all <laughs> so over the house. Much, so much peanut brittle. I don't know brittle. if you guys have ever had peanut brittle, but I'm surprised we did not have just ridiculous amounts of cavities, cavities growing up because that stuff is like cake to your teeth when you eat it. But, it stinks, um, dude. Yeah, Ed Kelsey would take a second job to get us the these candy gifts. man. And uh, that made it so much worse when we regretfully made the decision one year to find out where mom and dad were hiding the gifts. And then we tried to fake it. You remember this, Trev? <laughs> it, was the, it, was upstairs. it was so bad. We were like, you know what? This year, we're going to find out where they're hiding these gifts so that we know. We just couldn't wait. Ruined it. Ruined we it for everybody. We went up there. We found them in the closet. And we knew exactly what we were getting. We knew. I forget what the, was it. Every the Xbox was it the Xbox it or the Xbox? Yeah, it was the, the Xbox. Xbox. We knew and he it. Tried we, to, he tried to pull that. Hold, he knew we we knew we were getting that Xbox. And on Christmas Day, we tried to fake the joy. And let me tell you, whoa, can't fake didn't it. work. Didn't, didn't work at all. We were in the next room playing the Xbox, <laughs> and Mom came in and she said, "Guys, I just want you to know, your dad." takes an extra job every year just so he can see the joy on your Christmas day of you guys receiving the gifts you want. And let me tell you, if that didn't crush our souls for about 15 seconds, then we went right back <laughs> playing that Xbox. But <laughs> it, never uh, looked, never, never peaked. We never that, looked again. That, room again. that was no. the only time it took. We never looked be- after that. And, um, but we did ruin it that day. And, uh, Yeah. Shout out to Papa Kelsey, or as as Nolan Plunkett called him, uh, Willy Wonka. Willy uh, Wonka. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Ed, um, Ed Wonka. So kids out there, don't be sniffing yeah. around trying to figure out where your gifts are, man. Just uh, just wait for that Christmas morning. It'll be magical. It's going to be so much better if you wait. Trust me. Before we get to our games, we're going to get to uh, one of our newest segments. We did the last one. Uh, oh, last yeah. week was our first time doing this. This is going to be the second one. No dumb questions. Just dumb people. That's right, Trav. Uh, if you don't already know, we've been asking you guys for dumb questions on uh, social media, which are really just hypothetical football questions you might uh, be wondering yourselves. Uh, so keep them coming because uh, we are Please. getting some great ones. and uh, We got this- a good one. These we can't wait to answer these things. This week's comes from Adria Fitzy. Fitzy right, on Twitter. Who would win in a hypothetical football game? A team comprised of forty-three of the most athletic offensive and defensive linemen, plus you also get a punter, kicker, long snapper, or a team of only eleven of the best skill position players, but they play all of the snaps. Who wins? Trav? Speed speed kills, man. Ah, that's a good point. Speed, speed kills. And, and, you can't, and, and, you and, can't and, tell me any of these offensive or defensive linemen are chasing the fastest guys in the league around and catching them. They're, it's just not happening. Well, normally I would agree. I mean, speed and speed usually trumps power. You can't. I mean, I don't know. There's something Quickness. about speed. You can't. You can't top it. That's why I was always drawn to the Flash growing up. The Flash was my favorite superhero. That's all. I, I, everybody's on the Hulk. No, the Flash could. He's going to run circles around the Hulk. The Hulk can't catch him. <laughs> um, but you know what? I just don't see how you guys are going to stop us. What do you mean? Travis what are you going to? What are you guys? We only need to run you, one play. What play is that? Sneak? QB sneak? <laughs> over and over. Stop it. And over. Stop and it. And over. And we're just going to sub the line out. You guys don't have any subs. How are you going to stop? You're, you're just going to get so demoralized. You're going to quit playing. It's not going to be fun. What do you We're mean? just going to line up, nah. push it four yards, line up, push it four yards. Then we're going to sub out the next group of offensive linemen, more 350-pound men, line up, push it four yards. Like, you can't stop it. There's no way you're going to stop that play. Yeah. All now, right. I don't know how we're going to stop Tyreek Hill. In, yeah, in, there's, in hindsight, gotta, there's going to be, uh, there's gonna be the some end, mismatches the the day, all over the field. If you gotta, If you got to put together, because you're working against time here, too. Oh, it's a great point. That is a great point. But then we can just yeah. push and push, milk it, milk it, end it on a game winner. Field goal. Walk off. <laughs> Who's kicking it? It said it said that we in this hypothetical question, we get an average punter or kicker and a long snapper. Read the read the prompt, Travis. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh I think it's still no. We're gonna we're gonna play 
We're rushing three. We don't need a five-man rush. We don't even need a four-man rush. Really, the nose guard's probably just going to demoralize who's ever playing center. We're just going to have Aaron Donald lined up over who? Who's playing center? Doesn't matter. We don't even Trent. have to play center. We don't even have to We're have play anybody soft blocking. Zone, soft zone, eight in coverage. Give me Jalen Hurts. All three of them. We don't even need to. Somebody's going to. Jalen Hurts is going to block Aaron Donald. No, Jalen Hurts is going to get the ball from the center. Whoever snaps it to who's him. Who's snapping and just it to him? Run There's, away from who, everyone. We're going to have two contained players. We're going to have Von Miller and. Um, we're going to have a good going, outside backer. Out Micah here. Parsons and Von Miller on the edge, containing them. And then we're just going to have Aaron Donald bull rush in the center. Travis, there's no way. If you guys aren't doing, like, quick screen game. That's all it is. We, that's what we're doing. But then what are you going to do? It's drop eight. There's the Pat Mahomes special. Catch the ball. <laughs> run 20 yards backwards. Throw it as far as you can. Your best bet is to probably just you play long snapper the way you did in high school. Snap it 15 yards back and then have Pat chuck it another 60 yards that way. And well, Tyreek will just outrun everybody. We'll figure it out, man. I'm telling you right now, there's no way you guys are – there's no way. That I would honestly – I know that this doesn't sound like an exciting game. This might be – I would love to watch this happen. <laughs> I'm not gonna, it's pretty intriguing. Yeah. It is. Speed kills, though, man. Because you're thinking linebackers. Linebackers can – stop. they're run stoppers. You get, you're telling me Bobby Wagner right now isn't going to stuff the run if you guys just keep, Travis, keep Bobby running? Bobby Wagner is not stopping – a wedge of offensive linemen just doing QB sneak. It's not stopping it. You're be- you're going to try. The only thing you can do is try and cut everybody's legs out from under. And them. that's exactly what we're going to do. But then there's going to be creases all on the outside. No, there's <laughs> creases on your, who's hitting the edge. Who's hitting the edge. We're not even, we're not even putting somebody behind him. We're going to, we'll put two offensive linemen behind the quarterback. Who's going to be the, okay. Quarterback is okay. Let's see. Um, who's the QB <laughs> quarterback is Vita Vea just going to take the ball. <laughs> Good luck tackling Vita Vea. All right. Then we're going to have nine people lined up on the line, just big edges, and we're just going to create the flying V. We're going to reenact nice. Gordon Bombay's unstoppable Mighty Ducks offense. It was stopped. You know how it got flying stopped? Flying V. You got to take out the point. Everybody knows how to stop the flying Come V. Come on now. Got to take out now. the lead duck. Anyways, flying V. <laughs> The lead. Duck. The flying V right at you. Vita Vea behind him. And then we're going to have Trent Williams and uh, who's another? Just Mon- Jordan Malata just pushing all of that from behind. I love all this. We're taking out kneecaps. We're biting kneecaps. Dan Campbell special. We're biting kneecaps. <laughs> and it's fucking done. The play's done right there. You guys are, you guys got some big athletic <laughs> offensive defensive linemen out there. I'm not going to lie, man, but. We're just going to have to be feisty, man. And this is a hypothetical because there is no way 11 skill position players are going to make it through an entire game without an injury on QB wedge going right down. That's true. That's true. So injuries are turned off, but fatigue is on, and it is going to be a demoralizing game for the skill position. Fatigue is definitely on, and you guys are going to be running everywhere trying to catch Tyreek Hill. And we just sub, sub another 11 guys on. We got 43 players. That was a hell of a hypothetical question, yeah, though. That please is, keep these questions coming. That was uh, that was a fun was, little debate, and uh, <laughs> I I hope one day uh, we can see that. Probably not going to happen. Keep our fingers crossed for it. But. <laughs> Before we get to the rest of the show, if you love daily fantasy, you need to check out our partner, DraftKings. Mm. They're giving new customers a free shot at a share of millions, millions in prizes with their first deposit. All new customers need to do is download the DraftKings app now and sign up using promo code New Heights. Playing daily fantasy football is easy. Just pick from your favorite players each week, enter contests, and win cash prizes weekly. And with a free shot at a share of millions of dollars in total prizes with your first deposit, it's the perfect time to show off your football game, baby. Download the DraftKings app now and sign up using promo code New Heights. This week, new customers can get a free shot at a share of millions of dollars in total prizes with your first deposit. You heard the man. Just enter promo code New Heights to get a free shot at a share of millions in total prizes with your first deposit. That's code New Heights, only at DraftKings. Before we get to the rest of the show, we need to shout out one of my favorite products, Athletic Greens, AG1. AG1, shout out to AG1, man. This is the first, it's one of the first products that uh, I've actually been using every day. One scoop in the morning of AG1 starts me off just right. Um, 
You're yeah. drinking. You're. Is this like a, a green juice? Are you not, are you a green juice guy now? Well, I mean, it's. I wouldn't call it juice. You know, it's it's a bunch of uh, uh, you know vegetables, green things that have been chopped up and uh, are. You know, it's basically a big multivitamin of uh, real fruits, vegetables, and yeah, other things. Gets me started. Gets you started. Is it easy? To, like, to, I mean, a lot of this stuff is just like it kind of gets overwhelming and. You know, taking it every single morning is like, does it taste good? Or is this yeah, just like, all right, great. Let, me, let me chug this thing and just get the nutrients from it? Yeah, super easy. Just one scoop of AG1 with water into the shaker bottle, and I'm good for the day. All right now. If you guys listening have been looking for a simple way to start your day off healthy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Mm, if it's free, give me three, man. Ah, God, who doesn't love the free shit? All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash new heights. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash new heights to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Athletic Greens, I take you every morning and you get me started for the day. Moving on to 12 bold topics to wrap up week 15 in the NFL. Uh, starting off with our games, I, uh, I tee up questions and topics on Jason's game and uh, vice versa. He does the same for my game. So let's start off with the uh, Chiefs-Texans, baby. A little yeah. overtime thriller. How not about very, that? Not a very fun game, man. I was uh, – I was – I mean, we're in the playoffs. I was about to say, Chiefs 30 – Texans 24, overtime win. We're both clinched. The Chiefs are officially clinched, officially Officially. the winners of the AFC West division uh, for seven straight years. You want to talk about dominating a division? Seven Seven straight straight years. Wow. Mm -hmm. You guys are good. Andy Reid, baby. Well, we're both clinched. Man, our our butts are uh, tighter than Jennifer Lopez and some spandex. Uh, what's your big takeaway from this uh, this overtime winner for you? <laughs> Andy Reid says it best, baby. The crabs rear end, baby. That's and that's watertight. <laughs> <laughs> Tighter than the crabs rear end. Where are you at? What's your question though? Yeah, I mean, what's takeaways? your big takeaway? I mean, I, listen, we played the, the Texans. Texans I, are... I know you're. Yeah, I know you're upset. You guys, it was an overtime win. You guys, you know dominate and it was a weird so obviously i couldn't watch it we were playing at the same time mm-hmm. uh but from the stats wise it's crazy that this game was this close because offensively you guys move the ball up and down the field it looks like it will uh what's your big takeaway from this one that is a hungry team man that is a feisty team they play their asses off uh they play well together too they they, they communicate great on defense um, they were good at pass. They they passed off a lot of the crossing routes and uh, and made Pat kind of go through his reads more than uh, more than we have in in the past. I think and um, yeah, caught us on a few blitzes, fumbles, uh, a few flags here and there on offense and defense, and uh, put ourselves in some some t- some tough situations. And the and the Texans were capitalizing on a lot of our, uh, our a lot of our miscues. Um, and they, they they're a young team. They fly around, man. Yep. They fly around everywhere. They they play physical ball. I think it was just obviously when you look at the tape, it was a lot of stuff that we did that we got to clean up. But we've been saying that all year, and uh, we we eventually have to be able to put it together before the playoffs, uh, so that we know what that feels like and we know how how powerful this uh, this engine can can go. But um, yeah, hats off to the Texans for playing a hell of a game. I mean, listen, I know the Texans have only won one game, uh, and I think they have another tie, uh, but. They, they almost beat us. We got real close to losing down there records, in Houston. Um, you know, Dallas almost lost to him last week. Um, so the fact that you guys beat him in overtime, listen, these guys have been in most of the games that they've uh, been in. I mean, it's yeah. not like it, these have been blowouts for the most part. Yeah, they're a hungry team. They play hard. Uh, but it didn't stop the Chiefs. No. Chiefs had a season high in first downs. Mahomes completed 88 percent of his passes with no interceptions and rushed for 5.5 yards a carry totaled over 500 net yards this is why it's it's crazy reading these stats and like that this was not a blowout to be honest with you yeah Um, i think it was a little bit of limiting the possessions obviously we had two turnovers that that hurt us and there was but um pat mahomes is playing and playing lights out right now i'm rocking this shirt for a reason man that guy literally propelled us into winning that game man the the 
style of play that he has. I don't know if the NFL's ever seen anything like it. It's just it's so it's so playing with that guy, you just know that a play is never done, man. And right. it, the momentum and the energy you get from those plays that you know it's broke down, packets out of the pocket and then he just makes a crazy throw across field. Those are daggers to a defense and huge momentum. We've been saying it all year, yeah, and it's just uh, it's so much fun playing with him. And he's he's uh, he's on he's on camera saying that he's not a percentage guy and goes out and has arguably the best percentage. Well, he uh, broke the record. Percentage. Yeah, for, for, uh, for, for he broke the record it. for forty plus passes in a game. He has the highest completion percentage ever for a quarterback with over forty passes at eighty eight percent. Just tell um, you when he's dialed in, man, he is on one. Yeah, I'd I hate did. to see what this guy uh, is big on. If he's not big on completion percentages and he's breaking those <laughs> records, man, what are you big on? <laughs> I'll have to ask him to get back to you on that. That's good shit, man. MV Pat, back in the back in the Vegas odds as the uh, MVP winner right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's playing at a, at an all time high right now, and um, I gotta I gotta rally around it, and the rest of us gotta make sure that we don't turn the ball over on offense, you know, that, that that obviously has cost us a few games. Um so we gotta stay out of that situation of hurting ourselves. But other than that, man, our defense came out came up big. I'm talking about huge. We get stuck we get stopped in overtime on yeah. the first possession, which is always daggering, but our defense yeah. bad feeling comes, our defense comes out, Frank Clark chasing down the quarterback in effort second effort play, gets a strip sack on uh Davis Mills and I mean when you get team wins like that, man, that's it, even even against a, a team that's only won one game, man. You got to find ways to win. Wins are wins, and yeah. good teams find a way to get wins. That's what there it comes down to. Um, most of the games in the NFL are decided by one score or less. Yeah. And you know what? It ain't a shocker that the best teams that end up having the best records find a way to close out tight games. They find a way to persevere. We had one just like this down in Chicago, and stuff was not going out right. We'll get to that in a second. But let's get back to Pat still. Um, is he starting to be like the LeBron James of the end? It feels like he's breaking a record every single week. He's out there. This Fox, guy gets compared NBC. to literally the greatest Somebody's got basketball a record player every of all time. time. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's got a record every he's, single he's week. He's Michael Jordan. No, but he's Steph Curry because he's changing the game. But he but gets to LeBron Brady. stats. But, <laughs> but he's yeah, Tom like, Brady. Yeah. Dude, it's – it's um, I mean he's really uh just, and it's all deserved. You know what I mean? He's the young goat, right? That's what they call him, the young goat. The young goat, the baby goat. Baby goat, baby goat. Yeah, it seems like every single week there's a new one. The stats that he's breaking are just getting absolutely ridiculous. What do you mean? It's like, <laughs> I'll have to see it. I'll have to see yeah. one to to say it, man. But the the whole like uh, when he eats ketchup on a steak on Saturday. <laughs> He's undefeated on Sunday. You know make what I mean? Sure you take, fucking... Make sure you take the over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pat, what'd you have? I had that fancy ketchup yesterday. <laughs> we know he's a Looks big fancy like ketchup guy. When, yeah. yeah. When he eats that fancy ketchup, man, he breaks the completion percentage record, man. It's God nuts. forbid he has one of them uh, uh, honey butter chicken biscuits. Uh, <laughs> All the fame well, performance coming up. Speaking of breaking records, uh, it seems like you're breaking a record every week these days. Uh Shannon Sharp gave you the shout out. You oh. finally passed Shannon Sharp in career yards. Shannon man. on Twitter uh, what a guy, says, man. "Congrats to my nephew T. Kels on passing me all time receiving yardage list of a tight end. Well deserving. Keep going. Big play, um, Shay. And I feel like we, I already know this. Your favorite know, uncle. Your favorite uncle. I feel like I already know this because I know that you and Shannon." actually know each other like this isn't just like a former guy tweeting something out um out of nowhere you know you and shannon have a relationship so what's it mean to to get a a shout out like that from from that guy yeah i mean i've been on uh club shay shay um (laughs) his uh his show his podcast that he has and it's uh yeah it's been so cool to just have uh him tony tony gonzalez obviously another mentor um, those guys just to have in my phone, be able to text or give a call and, you know, or just see them texting me, telling me congrats on, on something like this. It's, uh, it's cool, man. It's cool. Yeah. It, it comes full circle knowing that at one point I was looking at these guys like, man, I hope to just, you know, sniff the kind of success that they have. Just, mm-hmm. just be able to be in a conversation that, oh, I, I'm, I'm something 
uh, as good as they are. Uh, yeah. And to be able to have that relationship with them, uh, kind of guiding me along the way throughout the years, he- giving me all the advice that I could ever ask for. Unc always, uh, he'll, he'll reach out in my worst games. He'll reach out in my best games, let me know what I need to work on, what he sees. And all that shit is so reassuring, man. You can't, you can't, you know, you can't talk about it enough how much having a mentor or having someone that's done it and, and, and what their input is, how reassuring that is, right. you know, how much, how much that helps you out with just your confidence and, and your understanding of, you know, what is, what, what it is that you're doing. It's just been so cool. And, uh, to be able to be in the same sentence as them, to have as many yards as Shannon has throughout his hall of fame career. It's just, uh, the, the ultimate respect to those guys for being able to kind of lead me, uh, into reaching greatness like them. Yeah. I mean, for me, same thing. I mean, there's something about getting a text or having somebody that you looked up to going into the league or growing up, uh, reaching out to you. For me, the big one I've, we talked about before was Jeff Saturday. Yeah. Um, you know, I think seeing guys that are, have already done it and had the success and then they're giving you pointers or telling you, you know, what they think. Yeah. I mean, Jeff, even this past, you know, before he took the the job with the Colts, mm-hmm. uh, sh- uh, shouted us out on the show, said he was a big fan of the show and to keep doing our thing out there. So nice. Um, I don't know, man. It's really cool to see guys that have uh, paved the way or, or been there themselves. And, uh, you know, when they're reaching out for advice or just the encouragement, man, it means a lot. Oh, yeah. You know, I got I, I got one of my my favorite coaches of all time, Tom Melvin, you know, yeah. leading leading me in the right direction in my entire career in Kansas City is our tight ends coach. Having Uncle Shannon Sharp text you, Hey man, you got to be more physical at the line. Hey man, you gotta you gotta be you know okay. speed up the field. You know all these you know be more aggressive when the ball's in the air. There's there's certain third downs you got to be able to be there for Pat and this and that. Just to hear that from a Hall of Famer, yeah, it just hits way different, you know. Yeah. And and to be able to come out of a big game and 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 have the stamp of approval, like hey man, you played your ass off that game. That was that was fun to watch. Yeah, that's just reassuring that you're doing the right things, and it just means the most. So. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Shannon and, and Tony and all the legends that I've been fortunate enough to ha- get a text from. Man, it doesn't uh, definitely doesn't go unnoticed. Man, that shit means the world at times. Yeah, and it's 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 cool how it comes full full circle, right? Because now, you know, at one point we were the young guys, and you know, just looking for any type of guidance whatsoever from these NFL players. Help! Help! Yeah. And now we're the older guys. We're the guys that are like, you know, hey man, will you? What are you doing over there? Stop doing that. Get over here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> or, and, and, and if we're being completely honest, I don't know if you're the same way, but man, I ask young guys all the time, you know, what are they thinking? What do you think about this? Do you like it? Like, I don't know, man. I love engaging I love, the young guys. I love, I love talking engage- ball, man. Yeah, you man. You know it, man. And um, I feel like for someone that knows how much it means for an older guy to, uh, I don't know, to, to offer his time and uh, mind like just thoughts to you, I do that same thing, and I and it's not one hundred percent. You know, it's I don't know, man. I I don't the word mentor, whatever. I I it's just be, being a teammate, man. That's and what it really is. When you're when you're old enough that you feel comfortable enough to offer more guidance or more help or more assistance or um, engage the conversation more, you do that. That's what yeah. being a teammate is. And um, you know, we're at that stage now, brother, and it's cool. It's cool. It definitely is, man. And there'll be times in games where I just I know I can help a guy out by saying something. You know what I mean? Because there, there's situations that I remember being in as a rookie, and yep. bullets are flying, and I am just confused. I'm I come off the ball, and I, my feet aren't going anywhere because my mind's working way too fast, or I'm thinking about the wrong shit, and I'm not doing what I need to be doing. Sometimes it's just it takes that reassuring vet next to you to be like, "Hey, you good?" Yeah. This is who you're working to. This is how we're doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just, I can remember plays, uh, specifically in the run game, because that's the biggest thing as a tight end, at least for me, was understanding who we're working to uh, during a certain blitz or a funky look when they're, they got different backers playing everywhere. You know, just an just un- unfamiliar look and to not know where to go or yeah. who to block. You've and been it's there. Like, You've made that mistake before. Uh, you know, it, you know, as a player, when it's like, "Hey, this looks 
a little different than what we expected. <laughs> I'm going to make sure this guy knows who he's going to, mm-hmm. who this guy's going to, he's going to. Or like, like uh, you know, hey, this was not how we expected this to happen. We're going to over-communicate this right now because I've been mm-hmm. to this party and I've seen this mistake made already. <laughs> exactly. But that's exactly. part of being a vet. Part of being a vet or an older player in the league is – Making sure the young guys play well, making sure the young guys don't make mistakes, right? Yeah. You got your you got your assignment in the playbook, right? And your assignment is to make this call to that guy so this guy knows, at least for the offensive line, so that this guy knows where he's going. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes you just saying this, that guy might not know who he's going to. <laughs> so as the vet, you gotta say, hey, you going to him. <laughs> 100 percent man yeah i mean that's what it comes down to and i mean that's the fun part about being in the league man is is navigating that stuff 100 one of the one of the fun parts and there's nothing more enjoyable and i cannot emphasize this than watching a young player go out there and play well it is so exciting when a guy is realizing his nfl dream that's why we do the stamp of the week the new heights like that's why it, it juices you up man it juices the team up Gets the people going. <laughs> you got to love it, man. You ever been in the – when was the last time you were in a situation where you were just like – or you you saw a, a young guy in a situation where it's it week. was – This past week. Past week. We ran a quarterback sneak. We ran a quarterback sneak this past week where – That happens that it happens every week, I feel like. But well, yeah, I mean, there's something every, every, every yeah. week. But, yeah. uh, Cam Jurgens, our rookie center, comes in. And we do a line shift to try and kind of throw the defense off like we're not about to run quarterback sneak. Shocker, we run quarterback sneak. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, me and Cam had never run quarterback sneak with each other. And, and that's not a play that you practice like full go. You don't practice yeah. quarterback So everybody's out there. At least at this point in the year, we're not like hitting quarterback sneaks in practice. We're, we're talking about it, but you're not getting the physical rep full right. go. And – uh you know, Cam has been very reliable, done everything asked when he gets his opportunities. And he's oh, yeah. going to be an outstanding player in this league. Oh. But that doesn't take away from the fact that I'm like, man, I don't know. You know, I've only done this play with Isaac Sayomalu and uh, Landon Dickerson. I, and I hope this is going to go well. And uh, sure enough, it went really well. Cam did his job. That boy you know, Cam. Yep. Yeah. Way to go, baby. And yep. uh, Jalen Hurts got in for his uh, second quarterback sneak. Uh, touchdown third, rushing touchdown of the day. So, yeah, man, I mean, you know. I don't know. I didn't really offer any encouragement. Just be like, hey, make sure you stay low. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, they know it's coming. <laughs> yeah. You know the That's drill. That's good shit. That's good shit. No, Cam was on top of it. Didn't need anything. We got to talk about one more thing from the game, and that is the jet. The jet, baby. Jarek McKinnon. Overtime walk, walk off. Jarek McKinnon. Jetty! Uh Said before the huddle. Mahomes told him, hey, uh, two hands on the ball. And he said, man, I'm, I'm about to score. I'm going to score. Um, I love told, that. Talk about confidence. The, he told the he line, said, too. That, he was like, listen, you guys you guys get the body on a body. I'm going to take this to the house. I'm why doesn't he do that every time? Um, I think it was just one of those, you know what I mean? Just felt I'm it? feeling it. I'm yeah. feeling it. Just give me the ball, coach. That play call I comes in. I got like, us. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I've been waiting for this one. We've already ran it 10 times, but I've been waiting for this yeah. right here. We're in striking distance right now. I can right feel now. it. <laughs> I can feel it in my plum. I've been feeling the last nine of them out. <laughs> I know how that safety is going to fit it. I know how the linebacker is going to fit it. I'm going to set that block up here. Uh, yeah. Past three weeks, 24 carries, 125 yards, 17 catches, 191 yards, five total touchdowns. He's, wow. he's had some baller games. Played huge against the Broncos for us, um, and has been uh, he's been the one getting the ball in the end zone as of late. We've been uh, I want to say we've been struggling to to put the ball in the end zone, but um, every time we give it to Jet around there, he finds a way to get in. And um, yeah, sure enough, I think he had two uh, this past game and uh, the game winner, man. And it's uh, you can't say enough about that guy, man. A veteran running back uh, in a in a kind of a younger room, Mr. Reliable. You can put him yeah. anywhere. He's, he's, a, he's a special teams guy, too. He can do everything for you. And um, right now he's playing his tail off and, and getting the praise for how good he's been for us, man. I love I love seeing it for him, man. All righty. Well, every, bit, every bit as good of a teammate as he is a a, a guy off the field, man. And um, Keep doing yeah. your thing, Jet. Jetty! Real quick, before we get to the rest of the show, we need to talk a little bit about upside. Ooh. If you're anything like me, you've been out shopping this holiday season, and it would be nice to get some of that money back. 
Ooh, you ain't lying. And now, thanks to Upside, you can. Upside is an app that gets you cash back on gas, groceries, dining out. And with all that money Jason's saving, he can go and find me a wonderful, very pricey gift. Yeah, don't count on it, Trev. All right. Anyways, using Upside is easy. What to get started, mean? download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play. Use our promo code New Heights and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. You heard the man. Just claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside and pay as usual with a credit card or debit card, and then you just get paid from there. Sounds nice. Again, use our promo code New Heights and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more with Upside. All right, moving on to the Eagles and Bears. It was a cold one. Took, yes, it was. Took the Eagles a little bit to warm up, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, Windy City, uh, definitely a cold game. I think I asked I asked one of our coaches before we were heading out on the field, I said, hey, what's, uh, what's the temperature saying? He's like, oh, it's uh, 16 degrees. And I was like, oh, you know, that's not that bad. You know? He's that's like, not well, that bad. He said it feels like four degrees. And I was like, what? And that wasn't like him saying that. That was like that's, what the app said. It said, feels like <laughs> four. That's, so, that, that's that Windy City, baby. That's yeah. exactly what it does to you. It was uh, swirling in the stadium. Uh, it was definitely cold, for sure. I've I played in a lot of cold games. It was a cold game. Anything below 20, that's where I really feel it. It needs to be windy, though. If It, it can be as cold as it wants. If it's not windy, it's not that bad. But the wind adds another element, for sure. Yeah, 100 Or if there's, you know... Rain, like fr- freezing rain. Ooh, fuck that. I play in terrible. snow. Don't put me in that yeah, freezing rain, man. Right? It's the worst. It's the worst. First quarter, seven plays. I wonder what the record yeah. is. That's pretty crazy. Well, it was it was a weird first quarter. There was a lot of stoppages in play. It was, you know, they had two injuries early on. They had to redo the kickoff. We had to redo the kickoff to start the game. Just it was no, just a very no rhythm. Yeah, you know, it felt like both of us needed to warm up, honestly. It was a very sloppy game in general in the first quarter. And, you know, for us, it took a while to get going. And, yeah, I mean, the elements definitely, I think, played a role. That's the thing. Once it, once you get the sweat going, I'm not even thinking about the weather. You know, it yeah. could be, like we said, it could be raining and sleet, and I'm not thinking about it But until I get to the sideline or if there's a long drive and my sweat, I, I'm not sweating, I'm not, my body's not as hot as it was when I was out there running around. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. And that's why I, I kind of hate going into the warm-ups in cold games because I would rather just go out there one time and stay out there the whole time than to go back and, and forth from back inside in. and out. Yeah. I, I, I absolutely hate that. I wish, I wish we didn't do the whole team warm up and come back inside after we just, you know, we're outside running around sweating. Cause yeah. then you get, you get out. It just feels 10 times more uncomfortable when you go back out there in my mind. I don't know. Maybe that's yeah. just me. No, I think that's fair. I think that that's accurate too. I know I feel you get warmed up. And you feel warm out there. And you then feel you come back in. Then you go back out there, and all of a sudden it's cold again. <laughs> so that is interesting. I've never thought about that, but maybe that's maybe that's a new strategy. I'm like on the sideline doing suicides, just trying to get my body to juice back up and get sweating again. Well, that is one thing that like I purposely don't wear warmer clothes during cold weather games because I feel like the colder I am, the more I'm going to have to run to warm myself up. It just makes me run more. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't yeah, know if that's yeah. real or not, but. That's what I've told myself. Could just be in your head. Could Probably is. Head. I do know this. Uh, Nick and I were talking during the week because it was cold in Philly this week, and we went outside during the week to practice. At one point, it was rainy, um, and it was cold and something. Get used to the elements or something? Yeah, but we went inside. No, well, we went outside on Wednesday. Thursday, we went outside because we needed to get some practice and some wind. It was more the wind than anything. And uh, I made a comment on Wednesday to him. Where I was like, yeah, he's like, you good good going inside because most guys don't want to go inside because of the turf. Turf, right? He's always asking the older guys like, hey, we need to go inside today. It's a bad weather day out there. It's not going to be productive. Let's just head it inside. Are you okay with that? It's more like, hey, your joints are about to suck, but we're going inside. I was like, gotcha, coach. <laughs> Appreciate the heads up. <laughs> but I I told him I was like, man, coach, I'm good going inside. And to be honest, like I'm good going inside if it's cold out too. Like I don't think you need to get ready for that at all. Like. The cold weather, I don't think you need to prepare for that. Boy, was I wrong. You I do. forgot. I <laughs> forgot how much harder that ball – it's really – it's not It's really not for the O-line, D-line. The cold is for the the ball. The ball changes so much when it gets cold out. It gets and harder. Yeah. It, it's like 
I'm sure they, it's different they, catching. It's different for snapping. Deflate gate? I get it, Tom. I wish I could deflate every one of them <laughs> balls. Those balls are rock hard. Rock hard in the yeah. When it gets below like twenty to fifteen degrees, that ball changes one hundred percent. Yeah, definitely was wrong on that one. We should definitely yeah. go outside and practice. We got to go outside. We got to go outside and work on out. this handing the ball off, ball security, all these yeah. things that, that go out there with your hand warmers. Amplify. Get used to using the hand warmer right, keeping the hand ready. That was our first cold weather game, really cold, cold weather game of the year. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad it happened in a game that we won and we kind of figured it out as the game went. We started getting rolling, but not uh, as you did. Yeah, I mean, still wasn't. Listen, Chicago. I don't want to put this all in the weather. Chicago played a really good game. Oh yeah, they they were coming off a bye week. Their coaches did a phenomenal job. Uh, Coach Eberflus uh, did a tremendous job of getting them ready to go. Uh, they were dialed up. They were they were they were being unpredictable. Um, you know, I I just thought that they had a really good game plan. Uh, their players played hard, and um, you know, I think you know we didn't execute. We didn't do everything we needed to do, and uh, found a way to win, but I thought Chicago did a really good job. Yeah, at least hats defensively. Off. Hats off to to the Bears. The ah, Bears. Um, ah, Hurts, outside of uh, the first seven plays in the first quarter, um, ended up going twenty one for thirty six for three hundred three. Yeah, I mean that's pretty damn good. Yeah, for I mean, for only having seven plays in the first quarter and then absolutely the finishing stat line ended up being big. He started going up top to Devontae and AJ, and th- we've talked about this before. The run game really wasn't working that great we've we've been able to establish the run in most of our games yeah um but this is why it's nice to have uh some horses out there a wide out and a good quarterback because feed your horse when, when the run game isn't working it can be it can be hard to get that thing going whatever the reason is you know you need all guys up front and the running back all to be working for the run game to be popping mm-hmm. and um when that's not happening it's nice to have you know two guys that can just be like hey we're just gonna play catch <laughs> let's simplify this thing we got a juggernaut out wide here let's uh let's just call all go and throw this thing up see what happens oh nice he came down with it again <laughs> I, I don't know why this thing isn't working out but uh that guy's gonna be one-on-one out there all day we're just gonna throw him the ball <laughs> oh that guy's doubled this time okay let's go over here to this guy who's one-on-one it's a luxury it's really nice aj's been a huge addition obviously and uh hurts aj and Devonte really took that game over from the second quarter on uh, for our offense, at least. How about this stat line? A.J. Brown had four catches for 98 yards in the fourth quarter yeah. alone. It was fun to watch. He just had to get warmed up. Just had to get warmed up. Just I mean, had to get warmed up. Hey. Even crazier stat line is that no team in the NFL, in the NFL history, has ever had four players with te- at least 10 sacks in a season. And you guys already got two. Yeah, we got the most sacks in the NFL right now this, as a team. It's sick. We're rolling. You got, you got Reddick with twelve. You got Hargrave with ten already. You got Josh Sweat, Sweet, Sweat Sweat. or Sweet, Sweaty, Sweaty, Uh, with nine point five sacks, and then Brandon Graham, BG's got eight point five. So, what? Four more games left. Probably gonna happen. You would assume so. Um, But that's a pretty crazy stat line. I don't think I've ever heard or seen anything like it. Obviously. Yeah, these boys are getting after the passer. I'll tell you what. Um, and I don't – listen, I'm watching this on the sideline, and I'm like, I get it. I'm Those watching dudes are dude, dogs, man. Dude, they're hitting three-man games so fast. I'm telling you, like – It's impressive, you're, man. If you're going to be forced into a drop-back game against us and you're running six-man, five-man protection, somebody's getting home. You better get that ball out. Yeah, And they're proving it week in, week out. It don't matter who they're playing. Uh, yeah. they're, they're able to find a way to get pressure and um, – all those guys right now are rolling. Obviously, it's it's fun to talk about the sacks, but, I mean, a lot of those could be covered sacks because you guys got some dogs in the back end too, man. This is why I'm not a big – I mean, I'm a big sacks guy this year because we got a lot of them. But um, a lot goes into sacks, right? Oh, Obviously, yeah. you just said on the back end, you know, my man Darius Slay, uh, uh, James Bradbury. Bradbury. Uh, you know, the, the secondary that we have makes that quarterback hold on to the ball just a tick longer for those guys to get home. And then also, you know, quite frankly, I don't mean to toot our own horn, uh, but our offense has been pretty good. And when your offense is pretty good, you gotta other throw. teams got to throw it to come back, baby. You get yep. a lot of opportunities to rush the pass. And we've talked about this before. It's my favorite thing that the defense has said. You got to earn the right to rush the passer. And, hey, they're earning it. They're stopping the run. They're getting them into pass, uh, passing situations, and uh, they're getting after the QB. 55 sacks so far this season, the most by a team through 14 games since 2000. Hey, 
Before heading to the locker room, Justin Fields had a little moment with you, man. He came up yeah, to you. Yeah, he came up to me. Yeah, we, we talked a little bit before the game at the coin toss because we're captains. And, uh, yeah, just came came up to me afterwards to tell me appreciated my game. Nice. Uh, and I did the same thing, obviously being a new height stamp of the week recipient. Man, this kid's good. He's a good young player. He had one of the most insane runs man. I've seen. Got called back because he nuts. stepped out of bounds, barely. Barely. But, uh, I mean, dude is a freaking beast. Be- absolute and, um, beast, man. That's why we knew going into this game, it was, it, I mean, dude, you play a guy like that, anything could happen. He's breaking Michael Vick records. I was about to say Vick Dog. experience, Vick. If you're, if you're breaking Michael Vick records, uh, <laughs> you're, doing you're a something. threat. Yeah, yeah, you can make a play at any time. <laughs> he uh, rushed for 1,000 yards in a season with four games left. Yeah. That's, uh, that's bananas. Absolutely. Absolutely bonkers to even think about the, your quarterback's uh, a thousand yard rusher like that. Justin trying to is he trying to get on the show or what? Well, that's what I I, I got to get used to the fact that I got a podcast. It was a great opportunity to ask him <laughs> in the moment. Hey man, we need to get you on the show. I need to get better. We need to get a little bit better at this. You know? Oh, uh, you we know gotta, I'm the worst at shit. I can't even ask my best one of my best friends to come on the show. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who? Pat? <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I couldn't. Or even, Andy. I couldn't even. You could never call Andy one of your best friends. That is way too disrespectful. Yeah, this is a father figure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Father football. Anyways, Justin, we'd love to have you on the show, obviously. Uh, so much respect for your game. And, uh, yeah, keep doing yeah. your thing, brother. Keep doing your thing, Jay Fields. Week 15 was a wild one, Trav. It was absolutely ridiculous. So many games the, to talk about. Oh, my god! I mean, I can't wait to get to some of these. <laughs> it's truly just... Amazing. I'm getting antsy um, just sitting here. Well, <sighs> through Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, we got a game Monday. Um, 12 of 15 games were decided by one score, and all 15 games were decided by 11 points or less. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty nuts. You know, I feel like we should probably talk about this. Um, you know, at this point in the season, you have records that uh, indicate how good a team is, right? Um, you know, obviously you guys played the one in 11, one in 10 Houston Texans, one, 10 and one, right. But going into that game, yeah, yeah. you know, we played the bears who had had three wins, you know, on paper should be a good game. It should be an easy one for us. Right. It's called a trap game. That's what it's called. It's called a trap game, baby. Trap game. There ain't no easy ones in the NFL. Especially not this point in the year. Your oh. entire playbook is on film at this point in the year. Yeah. Like you can get schemed up in a heartbeat. You yeah. the guys understand what how you're going to try and attack them. You know what I mean? Depending on who's up and who's down in the game. It's the any given Sunday for a reason, especially at this point in the year. Teams are playing for for a lot more than just you know what I mean. What they were in the beginning of the season. You can see the playoffs. You can see you know uh, how good a team is by by their their previous games, and and it's just I don't know. Yeah, the trap games are real, man. There's always a little bit of parity here. And what is a trap game? Let's, let's uh, summarize it like this. A trap game is, uh, is a game that you're not focused on. That's what it comes down to. You know what I mean? Um, I, think, I like to think of it that you don't have the necessary amount of either respect, fear, anxiety. Like In order to properly uh, prepare for an opponent, you need to realize that they can beat you and mm-hmm. they can harm you, right? Yeah. And, um when that isn't there, you don't prepare properly, whether it's the players, whether it's the coaches. You know what I mean? And you, know, you start yeah. winning a lot of games. You start thinking about playoffs. You start thinking about other things. Um, listen, teams that aren't in the playoffs, they're working. Teams that have lost a lot of games, they're doing everything they can to fix it. They're hungry, do- hungry dogs run faster. That's real. That's, That's real. a trap game. It so, is real. You know, I think um, – I know, I know the, the, the Bears and Texans were out there flying around, man. Yeah. And uh, you can see they're playing for a lot more than just, you know, wins, man. They're, they're, they're looking in the future, yeah. obviously maybe out of the playoffs right now, but they're all looking yeah. at, at a job, uh, looking at what their season looks like next year, how they can keep, you know, building what they yeah. got going. And Listen, let's be honest. Like, what's been happening to this point hasn't worked for these guys. So they're constantly trying to fix it, mm-hmm. whether it's scheme, players, what's going on tape. You know, you're going to have to figure it out on game day because they might be doing some different things. And, you know, for us – or for teams that have had success, a lot of times you're, hey, what we got going for us is working. We're just going to keep doing that. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
listen, it can make it difficult sometimes. Uh, you got to figure it out. So bottom line, are trap games real? Yes, they're real. But I don't even like calling them trap games, man. Yeah, I mean, I like every it's team any- in the NFL is good, right? You can get beat any Sunday. If your focus any- isn't where it needs to be for a second, and it's hard. Like, you don't know you're not focused. Like, it's just the reality is when death is on the front door, you're you're thinking a little bit harder about it. Man, this guy's got some bangers, man. This guy's got some bangers, man. Keep them flowing. All righty. Hey, Vikings, 33. Oh, my gosh. 33 I points. I only imagine the roller coaster that the Vikings. 33 <laughs> points. On. They are down 33 points to the Colts. The Colts, man. That's so How did strong. we do this, Indianapolis? 33. 33 nothing. <sighs> halftime. Never seen anything like it. I mean, it. it's 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 crazy. It really is crazy I to think. I feel bad for Matt Ryan, man. I feel bad for Jeff Saturday, Matt Ryan. I mean, it's, <laughs> that is that is a that's got to feel terrible. Yeah, that hurts, man. That hurts. What a roller coaster, man. You're thinking you're flying high. The starters probably looking at the fourth quarter. Yeah, they're like, hey, chilling. We'll be out, be out on the sideline drinking some water. Maybe get a hot dog from the same somebody. <laughs> no, sorry. No, sorry. Bro. Here come the Vikes. Never, never in the history of the NFL. You want to talk about trap situation? That's a trap situation right there. 33 nothing. Hey, my mind is boom. We got this one in the we bag. Won. Never. Uh, what are we doing afterwards, boys? Dude, get this. Entering today, teams that have trailed by over 30 points entering the half, zero and 132. And well, now they're one in 132. <laughs> Man. <laughs> It's, it's just crazy. And it's it's a collective effort. You can't – everybody's harping yeah, on when, when Saturday. You, yeah, oh, that's all on the coach. That's not on the coach. You can't – that's everybody had a piece of losing that one. Every single person. That's 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 bad across the board letting that kind of diff- – that, that kind of uh, lead up, that ain't good. Uh, and get this, Matt Ryan has been a part of the biggest comebacks <sighs> on the opposite side. The biggest comebacks – in NFL this history, in the regular Google season, records, 33 man. nothing this past week to the Vikings. And obviously, the infamous Atlanta comeback with the Patriots, 28-3. to The biggest Super Bowl comeback. Boo-boo records, man. It's the worst. Instead of the comeback kid, maybe he's the letback kid. Don't do Maddie like that, man. You're right. Fucking, that was mean. I'm sorry, that. Matt. It's he's not already, it's not already all feeling it, man. You're right. That was the bad. guy's already you're feeling right. it. Yep, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. That was stupid. All right. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> that bad. <laughs> being, a, being on the, the boo-boo side of records is the worst, man. I'm sure I'm on my side of some of them. I'm definitely on it. We already talked about the, the Rams game back in, I think, 2018. Yeah, 2018. Yeah. The yeah. the high-scoring game yeah. to ever lose 55 points or 50 points, and I, and I took an L, um, lost the Super Bowl against the uh, the Buccaneers, but had like the most receiving yards ever by a tight end in the Super Bowl. Thanks, but yeah, we got cool. fucking smoked. Yeah, a little humble brag there. I got you. <laughs> it fucking doesn't mean I got my ass kicked in that game. <laughs> um, but shout out to the uh, to the Vikings. Shows that this game is never over, man. Got to stay locked in. Just like uh, one team can put up 33 points and a half, we can put up 33 points and hey, a half. You it's like in hockey. Mentality, man. Worst goal lead in hockey, three-point lead. Why? You lose focus. 33 point lead, probably a pretty good lead, but yeah. <laughs> I'll probably take that. Hockey, three goal lead, that's a pretty big lead in hockey, but hey, we lose saw focus. It, we saw it in the uh, Argentina, France. Yeah, hey, well, they had a two goal two lead. Two goal lead. Two goal lead. Two goal lead in soccer. Worst goal lead in soccer. L- lose focus. <laughs> Gotta stay locked they in, said, baby. They ended up winning, though. They ended up winning. They did. They still did. Won. They, well, they Shout got Lionel Messi. Messi. Man. Yeah. Congrats. What's the next one? The Bills game. First, it gets delayed, and uh, fans were warned a 15-yard penalty for the home team for throwing snowballs, baby. A, that's a, awesome. Absolutely electric, man. I Shout love out. that. That's, that's Way to go, Bills. 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 Way to make Way it. to go. See? That's, that's real home field advantage right there. There should be a 15-yard penalty if you're not throwing snowballs at a snow <laughs> football game. All right? That's my rule. 15-yard penalty, not having enough fun, home field <laughs> I'll tell you what, it was awesome. I was thoroughly enjoying seeing the snowballs come flying in every time, every trip to the red zone. I was, I was enjoying it. Kind of got upset when they got worn because we weren't going to see it anymore. But uh, yeah, 
That was uh, that was awesome. There should be snowballs being thrown at every snow game. <laughs> Home field advantage, man. Yeah, I mean, don't throw it in the middle of the play, maybe. <laughs> but outside of that, have at it, boys. That should be a that should be NFL football tradition right there. Could you imagine thirty thousand just throwing snowballs on the field? Dude, that would I'd, get. Ridiculous. I'm praying. I'm praying we get a snow game at the link. I'm praying. <laughs> I want to see snowballs all over the place. All right? I'll be Santa Claus. You can hit me. I'm Santa Claus for the game. Throw them at me. I want it. It'd be like uh, Will Ferrell and Elf, man. Yeah. Everybody's just got ammo just stacked up <laughs> under their seat. That's pretty good, man. But, yeah, Bills Dolphins, an absolute, uh, a very close game. Yeah. Two of the top teams in the AFC. Josh Allen showed again why he's one of the best in the league. I feel like that was kind of the excitement of the game was the snowballs, you know? I mean, it was a good game outside of that, too. But, yeah. you know, let's be honest. Snowballs are more exciting than football. I mean, it's just the reality of it. <laughs> they were showing warnings on the on the video board at the stadium, man. That's awesome, man. Just yeah, That's how much cool. of an impact they were making. I mean, that's how you know Bill's fan. I mean, listen. Bill's Mafia, man. Bill's they Mafia, travel. baby. I they, love it. They, they fucking travel. Well, we got to talk about this next one. Uh, oh. The uh, the uh, the other week fifteen debacle. <laughs> debacle. No, I mean, listen, what I'm else would you Ra- call? I'm on the I'm on the Raiders side on this one, man. Just electric. I mean, dude. just an electric ending. What? Because they they were on the comeback. They were on the comeback. They had to what score. What has happened a to the Patriot late Way to tie it up? The oh, Patriot gosh. Way used to stand for smart football, dialed in, <laughs> like. This uh, dude, Bill. <laughs> situation smart IQ. Um, I can only imagine. I mean, I tried watching Bill's press conference. He doesn't give you a lot, but I could. I feel like I could just feel. You could just, feel it right in here, dude. Just the fire, like just the, like the. Father, I'm firing everybody. The, Everybody's getting cut. The father figure of NFL smart coaching situational ball is now a part of potentially. The, the worst, worst IQ football play of all time? <laughs> like, it's up there. I mean, it's just like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I really want to know what was called in the huddle. Oh, there's got to be a mic'd up. Somebody was mic'd up. There's, and dude, that has to not come out eventually. It. They're not releasing <laughs> it. All right, this is going to be like the JFK assassination. Ain't nobody saying nothing about this play. Otherwise, Bill <laughs> is, like, this is going to be locked up. In Quantico, for I don't even know if that's the right place we're talking about. Where's the uh, in Virginia? I don't even know what we're talking about. Anyways, th- this stuff ain't ever seen the light of day. Oh my gosh, man! He, he, like the the three running seconds back. left. <laughs> they run a so draw. God. They're on the fifty-five we, yard line. We're going into OT. It's a tie game. Yeah. Let's just take this thing into OT. This is why this is why coaches take a knee. Okay, because exactly. shit like this, guys. You know what? Try and go in there. Let's they see try if we and go can- in. Let's see if we can sneak out a draw. Maybe it goes, you know. <laughs> draw. For hey, some yo. reason. Guaranteed, guaranteed the running back went up to the wideout or the wideout went up to the running back and said, yo, I'm going to be there for the pitch or, yo, make sure you're there for the pitch. I just don't. And I, listen, man, trying to be great. Let's be great. Let's end it right here. Like, do you fuck, think that this is an offensive fuck over time, idea? Man. Do you think I'm that about they to legitimately end this shit right now, man? <laughs> you, there's no way this was. There's no way this a was call. like an offensive call, there's right? No, no there's way. no chance. Not with four seconds left. You're guaranteed an opportunity to win it in OT. Dude, you want to talk about some balls? You just got to go in there and not fuck it up, man. And what they do? They fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, the God. first lateral was like. Yeah, everybody's whoa. like, ev- th- what was dude, that? Ja- Why did this dude just lateral it? Jacoby Myers is over here saying, hey, it's my fault. You know, I threw the ball back to Mac Jones. Why were you, did, why'd you, you get the ball, the ball in the first place? <laughs> I'm telling you, there had to this be something said before, the, time before out. the play. Was this the play? That's what's confusing. Like, <laughs> you guys tried a lateral play to end a, uh, end a game going into overtime? Like, <laughs> and Jacoby Myers, like, <laughs> throwing it backwards. I mean, how far back? He threw it like 20 yards backwards. To the slowest guy in the field. That's that's behind everyone. Who's the who's the worst person that can have the ball right now? Mac Jones. Okay. Mac Jones. Where's he at? He's 30 <laughs> yards behind everybody. All right. I could only imagine the situation Mac is in. Mac is probably at he he looked like he had no idea what was going on. What the do, ball what do you think, flying what do you at think him. Chandler in the Jones air. is thinking. He's like, how did <laughs> 
Could you imagine me and Chandler Jones? Is that the ball? Why? <laughs> Why is it coming? <laughs> Bro. Uh, and then he catches it, and Mac Jones is just one on one with fucking posterized. Kevin, Kevin Garnett. Posterized. And Dude. he's stuck under the rim. Just absolutely stiffied. Oh my gosh, Mac! I know, I know, we're not a defensive player. We got to put up a better effort than that, buddy. <laughs> I, I'm the worst tackler ever, man. I used it looked to. Looks like he tried to take a charge. <laughs> he, he thought he was playing basketball. <laughs> he tried to get a rough in the passer. The passer. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Uh, oh, I man. mean, arguably the best part was yeah. We got. I mean, where is this rank all time? We got butt fumble. <laughs> you know, my man Mark Sanchez. But even that, like, that's understandable. Like, you just run into somebody, you drop the ball. Uh, like, yeah. you know, I mean, no. it's it's this embarrassing. But, you know, there's like a so, – yeah, it kind of, like, makes sense. You know, the um, – <laughs> It was like it was building up the tension. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, what's uh, the, the Leon Lett deal, like, uh, running the wrong way, right? Mm -mm. Runs the wrong way with the ball. I, I, you know, I kind of – you get discombobulated. I can see that. You know, the, uh, I mean, you know, the Orlovsky uh, safety in, in the end zone steps out of bounds, doesn't know where he's at. That's you know, all good. this is just like the amount of just like. You can't forget the Colts one, man. The Colts two man fake punt. That was up there. That's the one that I'm, I'm thinking might one. be just. I'm trying to stupid. remember that one. They they did this, the funky shift where it was like. My man, Cole Anderson out. was a part of that. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to snap the ball. And for some reason, the guy snapped the ball. I still think that one is like. That that's one, up there. But that's, that's the at least that's like a little bit screwed up because the coach, like, it's a weird play, right? It's just like, this is like some off the wall crap that we're doing right now. Like, this was just like. There's no way that this should have ever happened. Ever. Just without gross negligence, there's no way that this should have ever happened. Dude. Yeah, now that'll be a highlight that I will forever. I got to know. Have tears in my eyes. I got to know what, what happened in the huddle, what the play call was. Oh, that was like, so electric. Everybody's reaction was both hands on the head, jaw dropping, just awe and just disbelief that what they saw was fucking real, man. When Chandler Jones caught the ball, I was just, I started fucking dying laughing. Like, no way. What are they doing? Stiffy to the crib for the game? Oh, my gosh, man. That was, uh, thank you guys for uh, for making that possible, man. That uh, That's hilarious. Yeah, if we need a nickname for this this iconic play. Oh, my gosh. How do you, how do you, what, what is it? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know. I, I'm not. Yeah, please submit your submit your ideas for the name of this one. I can't think of anything. I'm stuck. Music City Miracle, uh, helmet catch, butt fumble. What's uh? uh what's this one, man? This is the uh, the Vegas uh, lateral roulette. <laughs> Dude, that that it's got to be something with Vegas. Who was in Vegas? Lateral roulette's good. <laughs> That's got to be it. They put they put it all on red and it was black. <laughs> there was that one. There was a bunch of people assimilating it to the uh, Water Boy, where <laughs> Bobby Boucher gets the ball. <laughs> the <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Thank you, Patriots and Raiders, for uh, giving us that entertainment. All right, now moving on to this new heights stamp of the week, baby. This is where we showcase uh, somebody that's taking their game to new heights. If you know what I'm saying, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Um, Jason, who you got this week? I got Frank Gore Jr. Mm. Little college shout out. Oh, Southern yeah. Miss. 21 carries for 329 <laughs> yards. Damn. You want to talk about new heights. Bowl it's record. A, it's a bowl record. He had two rushing touchdowns, one pass touchdown, 19 passing yards, pass receiving yards, I'm assuming. I don't think he threw a pass. He might have. Um, well, either way um, – an incredible performance, wrapped up in an awesome post game clip, where uh, love it, baby. he tells his auntie to chill. Uh, auntie, what you doing on the field, auntie? <laughs> <laughs> my, I'm in the middle of a post game press conference. My, my aunt and uncle have never been on the field after a game, at least that fast after the game. You know what I mean? Like what? They're in the middle of the post game interview, and here's she, <laughs> she comes running into the picture. <laughs> auntie, <laughs> chill. 
I know we got the dub and I just balled out, but we got to chill. I'm trying to finish this interview real quick. Yeah, this is how you know you're getting old. Man. You're still, <laughs> you know how you're getting old when you're starting to see players' kids. Uh, that like, you played with? Yeah. yeah. Like, I played with Frank Gore not just for a couple of years. Like, Frank Gore just retired like a year or two ago. And yeah. all of a sudden, his son's about to be in the NFL. I still remember when Asante Samuel Jr. got drafted. I'm like, Asante Samuel was on the Eagles when I was a rookie. <laughs> How is this possible? Anyways, shout out to shout out to you, Frank Jr., of course. Way to take yeah. your game to New Heights. Who you got, Trev? Yeah, my New Heights stamp of the week is Ivan Pace Jr., first unanimous All-American out of the University of Cincinnati. Bearcat, hey, baby. Go yeah. Bearcats, baby. Had... <laughs> unanimous. That means everybody. That? Oh, my See. God. It's See. Cause... See. <laughs> you know what I'm doing. I know what you're doing. You see, always go to the right. Um, to the right? Yep, to the right, baby. Been doing it wrong for years. This guy's got to figure it out. Uh, yeah, Ivan Pace Jr., baby, linebacker at the University of Cincinnati. Everybody voted for this man to be an All-American, and that is uh, quite the feat, man. It's never been done at uh, as Bearcat history. And, um, yeah, shout out for having a hell of a season. I can't wait to see what the future holds, baby. Congrats on uh, taking your game to new heights, brother. All righty. Let's look ahead to week 16. Week 16. Man, three games left. All right. You want to start off, Trev? Eagles at Cowboys. This one's going to be a good one, man. Um, Could clinch home field advantage through the NFC playoffs with a victory or a San Fran uh, Minnesota loss. You guys could definitely – you guys could clinch home field, and that is huge not to have to go anywhere in the playoffs. Um, and uh, obviously we know how the link can get rocking, but let's talk about, uh, Micah Parsons comments, man. The guy is, uh, he's not shy to, to speak to the media about, uh, his opponents, let alone the arguably the biggest rivalry in the NFL. Hell of a player, obviously respect the hell out of his game, but is, uh, he thinks a certain way about the Eagles. The Eagles quarterback, uh, says that Jalen's a system quarterback. Um, what are you, uh, what are you thinking about Micah's comments in the media? Hey man, we got our own podcast too. We're talking, you know, I, I think, um, you know, our focus is on the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, I don't think we can waste any amount of effort worrying about somebody else. Right. Uh, for us, it's all about what we can do, what we can do better, how we can be the best that we can be. You know, obviously we got a big game against Dallas, but our focus is almost always on the Philadelphia Eagles. And, um, you know, I mean, I don't really – think that much of it I mean Jalen Hurts being a system quarterback um, I think he said it best man he's been the system Not uh, right now yeah I, I mean we're all running a system you know what I mean like he he's running a defensive system that allows him to be successful although I mean he's a pretty damn good player he'll probably be good pretty damn good player yeah he'll be good anywhere but I think um, you know when you're good enough you the team builds the system around you and that's what we've done with Jalen right um, he's got a unique skill set. He's got a, an ability to, to run the ball, to throw the ball, uh, to assess a defense. To um, you know, We've got playmakers on the outside. We have a good offensive line. Uh, there's a lot of things that have allowed us to do a multiplicity of things offensively. And um, he is – that's, uh, that's uh, a lot of things. Is that better? Thank you. <laughs> he allows us to be – a lot of different offenses combined into one because of his skill set. Everybody, in my opinion, is a system quarterback. Everybody's a system offensive lineman. You know, I don't really think at the end of the day, he's a successful quarterback. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league this year. I think he's the best. I'm sure you, uh, you got your Patrick shirt on. Hey, yeah. we're homers. We're homers for our guys. But you know, I think at the end of the day, he's having success. Um, he's been one of the best quarterbacks in the league this year. Running, throwing, making decisions, uh, ball security. Um, and you can't take any of that away from that kid And uh, with how well he's done it this year. And I don't think he's going to lose any focus. You know, I don't think that this is going to impact the game whatsoever. We're just going to go out there and we're going to play ball. We're going to worry about the Philadelphia Eagles. And that's what you got to do, man. You can't be. You got to control what you can control. And the uh, Cowboys are coming off an overtime loss against the Jags. Our guy Dougie P found a way to get that big defensive stop, uh, pick to the crib, and um, the Cowboys are gonna probably be on edge a little bit more 
You know, yeah. it's uh, it's never easy to lose an overtime game, especially a game that you think you should win. Yeah, we're gonna get their best ball. You know, yeah, I think you know a lot of people. I think with the Eagles were excited that the Jaguars beat the Cowboys. Me, you know, we're gonna get a a fired up team right now. Yeah. Coming off a loss, especially a loss like that to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Shout out to Dougie P for getting a win, but uh, these guys are gonna be fired up at home. Big game on the line for both teams. Uh, so. You know, this is going to be a, a big one uh, across the board. Oh, yeah. And the uh, you can't can't not talk about it. Uh, it's a Christmas Eve game. Christmas Eve, Most, baby. But those are always the fun ones, man. The uh, the holidays always kind of add a little bit more magic to the games, the atmosphere. At least in my mind it does. Oh, yeah. Um, you always have a little bit more family and friends uh, around. I don't want to say distractions, but there could be more distractions for guys uh, because yeah. it, they they have a lot more family in town. Things uh, things aren't the routine uh, week that they typically are in the NFL, and it's just it is what it is. I know Coach Reed always makes a big comment on the holidays being you know stay focused on what we got going on in here. There's a lot right. of stuff that can kind of clutter your mind outside of football. Um, he's not saying you know don't be around your family or anything like that. He's just letting you know that it can become a distraction, uh, and that you know we just we don't want anything to ruin what we got going on in the building. So just make sure you stay focused, and uh, that's I, I think that's in every you know job out there. You know the holidays just bring a different vibe outside of work that um that can have you thinking about other things, and it's um you just got to make sure you focus in on on the game, and especially playing on Christmas Eve. It's magical. Have you ever played on Christmas? I played on Christmas Day. Yep. I think I played against the Cowboys on Christmas Day, too. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah. I agree. We've already talked about this. I'm a big fan of holiday games. Can't wait for the Ghoul Bowl to get here. Uh, (laughs) I'm all in favor of the holiday games. Christmas Eve is going to be special. Uh, So, Oh, yeah. yeah. I think uh, think we both both get the the luxury of playing on Christmas Eve and on New Year's. Oh. Mummer's Day Parade in, in Philadelphia. Not a bad uh, sight. Make sure that saxophone's working, baby. Let's fucking go. <laughs> All right. Hit that F flat. Let's get to you guys. Oh, sorry. Seahawks at the Chiefs. You guys are finally back in Arrowhead Let's after go, three straight road games. It feels, it feels like I haven't played in Kansas City in like a decade, man. Let's get to the big storyline of the game. Is this Travis Kelsey's <laughs> revenge game? With Geno Smith, (laughs) a man who took your scholarship from West Virginia. Stop it. They weren't going to offer me. (laughs) Don't do this. Who's who the Jets drafted ahead of you. I I also did put in there that Tyron Matthew was also on that list of possibilities. The Jets could have got that Rex Ryan also told me. But don't don't bring Tyron into this feud. This is between you and (laughs) Geno. There's no way that I'm even on. Are you gonna get a win? We, we is Travis Gino Kelsey probably ever doesn't even beat know Gino? who I am. Gino who doesn't even know. Yeah, because he's am, been beating man. you. Listen, in order to have a rivalry, <laughs> the other guy's got to win occasionally. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> All right, you're juicing it up, man. I'm. I got to get a dub against this guy, man. <laughs> nah. He's obviously been playing his best ball. He's so shout great. out to Gino, Gino, yep. and what he's done up in Seattle. Um, a lot of doubters in the beginning of the season. And as he said it, baby, they wrote me off, but I ain't right back. Yeah. Legendary line. I agree. Um, and, uh, yeah, Seattle's playing great. They're playing great ball right now, man. Um, they are. And we'll, uh, we'll definitely have a tough one at home. And, uh, yeah, get to see my guy Ben the Baller coming in town. We're going to have a, have a fun Christmas Eve game, man. Hopefully we, uh, we come together and we finally put it all together, man. That's the thing where uh, – we I don't think we've played our best ball yet in any in any game, um, and even the games that we did play great in, like the like the Bucks. Who else did we play? The San San Francisco Forty Nine ers. There's still a lot that we can clean up, and um, with that kind of mentality, you know, you want to be able to put that game together before the playoffs happen, uh, so you know what that feels like, you know what that looks like, and you know what you're capable of. Well, here's a stat line uh, for this week's game this season. Teams after playing San Francisco, which the Seahawks just did, uh, are one in twelve Damn. in their next week's game. You know the one team that won following playing San Francisco. Uh, we beat the Titans after that, I believe. That's right. So it's Kansas City. It might not have been the Titans, but yeah, that's cool to oh, cool 
cool to be on that list, be the only team on that list. San Fran's a hell of a team, and they're a they physical are. team, so that they're makes loaded. sense. They might teams might just be a little bit more beat up after they play the Forty ers Well, getting that run attack and their defense, their defense just flies around. Obviously, they got the defensive front and those linebackers that bring bring the tenacity, man. Yeah, it's a it's a tough front to play against. Well, it'll be a good game this week. Seahawks, I'm sure, are going to bring it against you guys. That wraps it up. All right, now. 18th episode of New Heights is 18. in the books. 18. It feels like we just started. I know. This is crazy. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube to the Heights New Heights channel so you know uh, when new episodes come out. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, make sure to check out our official merch store at homage.com. Slash New Heights. You heard him, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, New Heights is a Jukes original presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. Don't forget to follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show with one S. Um, and throughout the week, we'll have fun clips for you guys to watch. Uh, thanks to our production crew, as always. And thank you guys for always listening. Until next week. Peace. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. <laughs>